Good evening. Good evening. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you all for joining us on this fine evening to take a look inside of the Dorsen Scholars Program. We hope that everyone who is tuned in and is joining us is doing well on this evening. And we're really excited to share a short film that shares a little bit more about what we do here at Dorsen, our scholar and our scholar experience. I'm going to now turn it over to our executive director, Natasha Scott, to introduce our short film. Good evening, Natasha. Hey, Nimaako. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, this is our last Dorsen event of the year, so I appreciate everyone being here. Um, new folks, some of our existing supporters, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, so we launched the Dorsen Scholars Program in 2019. We were very excited to launch this brand new cohort continuum program that would allow us to work with a very defined group of 20 bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. They were fresh out of eighth grade when we first met these students, um, and we're excited to work with them through their high school years. Um, as excited as we were, as you can imagine, we were not prepared for a global pandemic. None of us planned for COVID. Uh, we never expected our program to go virtual um, and for our students to be facing the challenges brought on by virtual learning and essentially trying to survive in a health crisis. Um, so our short film tonight that you'll watch in a few moments is really a testament to um, just the resilience of our Dorsen team, our commitment, uh, they really fought to keep this program alive in the face of tremendous challenge over the past two years. And more importantly, the resilience and the brilliance of our scholars who are among a generation of students who really face something unprecedented. Um, and they built tremendous uh, muscles in terms of resilience and dedication and remaining very steadfast to their goals despite all of the challenges in this difficult time um, that affected their educational journey. Um, super excited to potentially have Tamira, one of our students joining. Um, I think she's still trying to get logged in. Um, she's one of the students that are featured in the film. Um, we've premiered the film back in April at our Spring Splendor Gala. And so a lot has happened since we shot the film. A lot has happened since the gala. Um, hopefully Tamira can join us and give us some insights into the return to in-person learning and just the journey um, within that that journey within itself and then excited to share just new perspectives and updates um, of life since the film and since being in lockdown. Um, I'm also really excited that Nate Reichel is on our panel. Nate is our director of data and operations, uh, making sure everything is flowing in the background at Dorson. And Nate was also a chief facilitator of our program moving into um, championing wellness and self-development during this time on our planet, um, where all of us, especially our students, really needed that type of enrichment the most. So um, without further ado, please join us in watching a look inside the Dorsen Scholars Program. This is a video about the Dorsen Scholars Program, but to tell our story, I actually have to go back about 30 years. Back to 1992, when my mother, Sonia Scott, founded Dorson, her passion project. As an immigrant, first-generation college student who grew up low-income, my mom was on an unrelenting mission to provide opportunities, mentorship, and a safe haven for youth from the inner cities of Essex County, New Jersey. For nearly three decades, Dorson offered a wide spectrum of programs for youth in the local community. Financial literacy classes, a free computer lab, career development classes, free SAT prep classes, dance classes, scholarships to summer programs. You name it, my mom figured out a way to offer it. And all of this was done with virtually no budget, no staff, just my mom and whoever she can get to help her. Now, where was I the entire time? Right there by her side. First as a student in pretty much all of Dorson's programs over the years, then as a mentor to some of our high school students, and a class instructor, and now as Dorson's first ever executive director. In July of 2019, I resigned from my job at Columbia University to step into this role, and I envisioned a new era of Dorson. We'd move with more intention, we'd operate with more structure, and provide a cohesive, high quality, high impact program. That brings me to the Dorson Scholars Program. 
a massively ambitious step in a brand new direction for Dorson. The Dorson Scholars Program is a tuition-free, supplementary college and career readiness and self-development program designed to enrich and develop the next generation of leaders and change agents from underserved communities. We received 65 applications for our inaugural cohort of just 20 students, which immediately exposed the dire need and thirst for a program like this in Essex County, New Jersey. We launched in November 2019, and the program was going great. Our scholars were meeting twice a week, every other week, for college readiness and career development classes, getting the skills, knowledge, resources they need to prepare for post-secondary education and make informed career goals. I blossomed into this like whole new person. We all want the same thing, but you come from completely different environments. It's like, oh, that's this is pretty cool. Like, I like this. It was also really fun connecting with everyone. The most memorable moment from in-person in Dorsen was our uh, networking event. One of my favorite classes was the one when we were working on like the roller coasters. We found common interests and we just made a whole bunch of friends and it was a great experience. We brought in guest speakers from around the local community to speak about their educational and career journeys and allow our scholars to begin building their own professional networks. Our scholars engaged in community give back projects deeply rooted in their hometowns as civic engagement is one of our program's core pillars on their paths to becoming active agents of change in their local communities. Our scholars are forming bonds with each other, we're building this community of support, and this vision of a program is coming to light, and then COVID hits. And everything about life as we knew it changed. The deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. This is truly an unprecedented situation. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. At first I was like shocked because I didn't think that the virus would be so serious and would have to like stop like in-person schooling it was it was kind of a crazy transition for me like it was just it was just so fast i couldn't even i couldn't even react to it to be honest with you last year we had just gotten into high school but then when we're at home and we're doing online school there's a whole different set of rules for that i missed like interacting with my friends at school and like all the like projects we used to have i haven't bounce the basketball and like god knows how long hey i just miss being around my friends you know like joking around and having fun in school and stuff and it's a lot harder to learn on your own i was hoping that the class would continue i thought dorson would fall apart i honestly thought it would fall apart and we wouldn't be part of the program anymore okay let me see if i could do it now tip your camera down again Overnight, like every other institution around the country, we went virtual. We immediately reached out to our scholars and parents to find out what devices they had at home, and then spent hours on this thing called Zoom just to try to figure out how we were gonna do this. We only had a couple days before our next class, and it felt really important that we didn't miss a beat with our scholars. I remember feeling a little unsure, um, but wanting to accomplish this goal of making sure that the students got what they needed and that this assignment, this class was um, conducted and that they didn't have a break just because the world made this abrupt change. So welcome to Dorsen Scholars Program online. <laughs> we are still here, life must go on. Um, we all made a commitment to this program and fortunately Unfortunately, due to technology, the show must and can go on. I was happy that the program would be continuing. I was happy that we managed to like, uh, move over to remote learning. Actually, like, in comfortable clothing, in my bed learning. I had a notebook out, my computer out, and I was like in the most com comfortable like position, that way to learn ever in my life. Now, diving into the virtual world definitely had its challenges. No, I, I'm just having a little challenge hearing you. Is that what uh, you said? I think it's like... Can you hear me, Jonathan? You're still muted. Um, you said that you're a special agent. I want to know. I guess one of my biggest challenges would be uh, staying motivated to do work. Virtual learning, it's more difficult to get your point across. When we are asked to like answer a question, but we don't really realize that someone else is going to answer it. So we both talk at the same time and it's just that awkward moment when we're just, who's going to go first? 
Suddenly students are home all day, they're isolated from their friends and classmates, virtual school is a brand new frontier, there's a terrifying health crisis right outside their front doors, some of their parents are losing their jobs, I mean their entire world basically gets turned upside down overnight. So it was really important for us to try to encourage our scholars to stay connected, but then also distract them with a little bit of fun. Fantastic Four, Jazeera, what do you guys have? Got nothing. Ooh, nothing. We said Spike Lee, and we don't have... That's not Spike Lee, it was just a guess. Outside of classes, we hosted a really fun trivia night the scholars had a blast with. We also threw together a book club, hosted other game nights, and movie discussion nights. I read Let the Sky Fall, which was my pick. A movie discussion. I watched uh, The Social Network. I feel like book club was just like a very great experience. And it was pretty interesting talking to other people about the movie and seeing what their reactions were. We instituted group advising. Our scholars met in groups of three with an assigned Dorsen board member for bi-weekly check-ins, which gave them the opportunity to stay connected outside of class and talk about how they're feeling. Pretty early on, we also began to discover unexpected benefits of operating virtually. One positive definitely we, we get to like invite more people over who would otherwise not be able to like come on. Instead of like having to run to a new building and different things like that, it's just a lot easier to actually be here and be present for this. We were able to bring in guest speakers from around the country, not just locally, for our career development course. We took the students on a virtual tour of Columbia University. We hosted an alumni panel with Thorson alums. We realized there's actually a lot that we could do in the virtual world. I mean, we worked hard to pull this thing off. Pulling together a virtual program overnight with no understanding of what the future would hold was not easy. And it took a team of amazing volunteers to stitch this thing together. We all committed even more of our time and effort to make sure our scholars felt supported through probably the most difficult school year of their lives. So we made it through the school year, we made it to June, but we knew we had a lot of work to do over the summer. My goal was to make sure that the scholars were supported as we knew that we'd be expecting 100% virtual in the upcoming school year. We standardized our curriculum templates for a cleaner look. We built out an online scholars portal in an attempt to create a one-stop shop with everything our scholars would possibly need for the program. We transitioned all communications to Slack, a popular email substitute, in order to more efficiently run program communications and familiarize our scholars with a platform currently used by professionals in the workplace. The scholars portal is really easy to navigate. We get to like look over our notes of what happened last class or like look at the, the calendar. Slack and Notion, I thought they were pretty good because we got to like communicate with, other, with the other scholars. I just wanted the scholars to feel supported uh, and know that we would do whatever we needed to to adjust to, to the unknown. Our resume writing class was definitely the most memorable. Like learning about networking with other people and how important that is in the real world. Uh, public speaking on virtual environment, I kind of feel like those classes um, virtually actually kind of help us, you know, interact better. To continue supporting our scholars' emotional health and wellness, we made group advising a permanent component of the program and roped in some male advisors to support our young men. I decided to become an advisor in the Dorset Scholar program this year uh, because I truly identify uh, with the people, the culture, and uh, the mission. We also embedded mindfulness practices into our classes and really prioritized our scholars as individuals, first and foremost. At the top of every class, we start with a gratitude exercise and promote the power of gratitude and the importance of self-care in building a healthier and more positive mindset. My mom brought like snacks and drinks for like the people who deliver our packages and the mailmen. I was I was happy because I got to see like how people felt excited. Yeah, like it made me think like what I'm grateful for what I have now. I uh, became like more positive, I guess, around my friends. Journaling like once a week during like Dorsen really helped me boost my positivity about everything going on right now. 2020 was a rough year. 
COVID was one thing, but our scholars also witnessed a country reconciling with racial injustice. Young people from underserved inner city communities were hit hardest by the educational inequities the pandemic and remote learning only exacerbated. And on top of that, faced the emotional toll of fighting for social justice. There's finally a spotlight on protecting and uplifting vulnerable populations. And so now is the time more than ever that we must support these young people, highly motivated young people with great potential. My name is Alex and I'm an aspiring developer. My name is Jazira and I've written 20 plus novels. My name is Jonathan and I love game design and graphic design. I'm Tamira and I aspire to be the change that I wish to see in the world. My mother's mission was to provide a safe supportive space for local youth to work towards a future filled with college and career possibilities. For almost 30 years at Dorson, we've remained steadfast towards that mission. With a tiny budget and a small team of volunteers, we've established some awesome partnerships. We've watched our students have life-changing experiences. We've watched our students go off to college and beyond. I mean, we've truly made a lasting impact in the community. The passion and commitment that goes into uh, the vision that Sonia set more than 25 years ago. So this is not a fly-by-night thing. This is a, a quarter of a century uh, uh, at work, making an impact in our communities, in the lives of our students. COVID has impacted education, the workforce, and the workplace tremendously. The landscape of higher ed is changing. The jobs of tomorrow are looking very different than the jobs of today. We are essentially challenged with preparing our students for a future that is changing rapidly every single day, while still providing access to the guidance, knowledge, and social capital that they need to get a leg up in life. At Dorsen, our goal is to develop our students into self-actualized individuals with maximized post-secondary and career possibilities. But it takes far more than just SAT prep and college advising. It takes nurturing a strong sense of self and a pride in one's community if we are to develop the future leaders this country needs. But this work isn't easy. It's a hustle. It takes more than a village. It takes money. It takes resources. It takes partnerships. It takes a selfless commitment. It's a grind, but there's nothing worse than untapped potential. And we're doing all that we can to make sure Dorson is an incubator of potential because these students' dreams deserve to be realized. Our vision at Dorson is to expand our reach and serve more students through the Dorson Scholars Program. We believe it is imperative to invest in the potential of young people from underserved communities, and it's about time we level the playing field. Join us in bringing our vision to life. What a video. Every single time I see it, it sparks another piece of joy and happiness in me. And I'm so proud of what you and your family have done, Natasha, in keeping Dorson going and your commitment to expanding it beyond your mother's wildest dreams. And that's all I'm sure that she could have hoped for. So round of applause for Natasha for taking on that torch and not just doing it herself, but identifying those around her who can support who, have, who share that commitment. And I realized I didn't introduce myself earlier. My name is Nima Akko Brown, and I am a proud board member of the Dorsen Community Foundation. And along with myself, Nate, Eloise, Iris, um, and our other amazing board members and volunteers, advisors, we've been um, successful in ramping up the Dorsen Scholar Program with our cohort this year. We have all committed our time and our energy to ensuring that our scholars have everything they need to succeed both in our program and outside um, in their homes and in their schools. So I feel privileged to be able to take this time to talk with you and Nate a bit more to learn more about how um, Dorsen has made the transition during the pandemic and what your both of your visions for Dorsen are moving forward. So I'm going to start with Nate. And Nate, you've come on board and you've done um, some amazing work at leading and getting Dorson into this new virtual and digital space. And so one of our first questions is, um, 
What takeaways do you have from working with the scholars during their virtual year during the pandemic? Oh, uh, so many. And uh, I mean, I totally agree. Watching that video back was amazing just to see kind of all that we did. Um, seems like we've come so far yet we're in such a similar situation in so many ways. Um, so definitely the shift to like fully virtual was a transition, uh, obviously. Um, I think that it really did show, as Natasha mentioned in her opening though, like the resilience um, of these scholars because everyone just continued showing up and bringing uh, great energy and having really fruitful conversations, whether in class or, or in advising sessions. And so, um, I mean, basically one of my big takeaways was just like, how proud I was of our scholars for continuing to show up. And obviously everyone else that helped work behind the scenes, whether volunteer or guest speaker, um, just really all hands on deck um, to get us through that year and into this year. And so I know you're asking about the, the pandemic in particular, but I, I do know that our scholars are incredibly happy to be back. So um, it seems like, you know, now that we've been able to come back to, to the classroom, um, it's, it's been really refreshing. Indeed, I know you mentioned um, how the shifting to virtual really highlighted our scholars' resilience and their ability to pivot and be flexible. Um, and one of the other things that we are working on at Dorsen, of course, is building and developing their self-confidence. And so in addition to this resilience and supporting that resilience and ensuring that it's something that they can carry through um, in the future, how has Dorsen helped the scholars develop and build their self-confidence? for me again <laughs> yes that's what you mean um, okay um so uh natasha uh, did a really great job um kind of refreshing our model and so we have a three c's approach uh we have building self-confidence meaningful connections and community engagement and so really focusing on that self-confidence in in my opinion is about everything we do, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's follow up and reflect and connect, um, but really just kind of trying to surround the scholars with champions of support and trying to show them that as best as possible, we're going to try and create an abundance um, mindset here at Dorson. And so, um, you know, if we can't answer the question ourselves or connect them to resources that we know of, we're going to certainly bridge them to resources in a, and or people in our network that we feel like can can best support them. So um, really kind of, I think, throughout that, showing them that whatever goals they're striving for, we can kind of help them take action little steps to, to get there and kind of build that self-confidence in themselves. Um, you know, again, surrounding them with that encouragement and, and um, group of champions. So um, yeah, I mean, certainly can dive into more with Reflect and Connect in particular, but yeah, just in short, just trying to encourage them and, and turn what we teach into action so that they can build that confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to add one thing. So um, I think, Something that we learned during COVID and the move to virtual learning when it comes to like self-confidence and our students developing like a strong, you know, sense of self, self-awareness is that's kind of the foundation of everything. Like we realized there's no real point of us talking to them about college or careers if they themselves don't feel confident or don't feel well. Um, so mental health and wellness that obviously came up a lot throughout our program. Um, and I think all educators throughout the whole year realize like how important checking in and students wellness is. And so that's why um, our emphasis on wellness, our emphasis on building self-confidence, our emphasis on um, helping the students really build self-awareness um, was so critical to the redefining of our model and just us rethinking through the programming during the virtual year. And then even now into this return to in-person, um, it's been a huge cornerstone of our program, um, our reflect and connect advising and just general um, emphasis on health and wellness. Absolutely, and to that point um, of that increased focus on the scholars health and wellness, um, the enhancements that were made to reflect and connect um, even some of the one-on-one -on -one mentor and advising sessions that some of the scholars have engaged in. Natasha, what aspects of the Dorsen program have you found to be the most impactful in the scholars' lives? Yeah, um, I think Reflect and Connect was a huge 
uh, like surprising new addition to the program. Um, can you tell us when we started the really quickly? Can you tell us a little bit more about what Reflect and Connect is for those not audience who may not be familiar? Yeah, so Reflect and Connect is our like advising model. So um, when we started our Dorsen Scholars program, it wasn't a part of the program. We were very much centered on college readiness, career development, and community service. Um, Reflect and Connect was kind of birthed out of COVID and, and lockdown, um, where suddenly our students were at home and we had no way of kind of like making sure that they were staying connected to each other um, and that we were making sure that we can check in on our wellness, sorry, that's the <laughs> post office or Amazon or somebody. Um, and so um, kind of overnight during COVID, um, we threw together this advising model um, called Reflect and Connect, where basically we broke our students into small groups, um, each with an assigned advisor. At the time it was board members, now we've kind of opened up our advisor um, population. Um, and our students um, every other week, on so the weeks that they don't have class, me with their advisor um, and literally reflect and connect. So they reflect on their week, they reflect on what's going on with them personally, um, uh, professionally, uh, academically, um, and then they get to connect with their other students and they get to connect with an advisor. So like one dedicated Dorsen team member who really kind of know, gets to know them in and out um, and really helps them stay accountable to their goals um, as well as just making sure that they're well, just kind of checking in with them um, periodically throughout the week. So that was a huge new addition to the program um, that we didn't plan for, but we quickly realized that it was making a great impact on the students, um, particularly during COVID where they were feeling so disconnected. Um, and so we decided to make it a permanent component of the program this year um, and did spend a lot of time kind of developing out what that curriculum could look like. Um, Nate was hugely influential on the development of Reflect and Connect, um, as well as Christy, our new program advisor, or program manager who started this year, who um, has a health and wellness background and a mental health counseling background. And so she's been um, really instrumental as well in building up that program. Um, um, Natasha, you, you took us to a great transition in terms of um, your vision and how you see Dorsen expanding and growing in the next three to five years. And one of those highlights is that I would love to congratulate you on is the hiring of a program manager. I know our fellow board members um, were really happy to see the staff at Dorsen grow in that way with someone that can provide that actual day-to-day -day support for you as the executive director, as well as um, that day-to-day -day support for our scholars as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, how you recently brought on this program manager? Christy is amazing and fantastic um, and how that's impacted the program and what made you know that the timing was right? Yeah, um, so prior to Christy coming on board, um, managing the program was like an all hands on deck kind of thing here at Dorson. Um, we all as the team worked together to make sure that we our students didn't miss a beat during COVID. Um, and we were able to successfully transition the program to virtual, um, build out the curriculum in a virtual sense, and um, you know, teach classes. It was really all hands on deck with making sure that the day-to-day -day operation of the program were going. So this was before we brought in um, Christy. Um, with Christy coming on board, we knew that we were moving one back to in-person, um, which was gonna be a whole journey within itself. Um, and then also this is a pivotal year for our scholars in that they are, um, they enter junior year, which is a huge, um, imp hugely important year of their high school careers. And so we knew we wanted to have someone um, outside of me, outside of the team, kind of as a labor of love working together, one dedicated person that can be like the linchpin for the whole program. Um, so Christy is um, a godsend, honestly. <laughs> she is, um, she is, so great with the scholars and was such an easy transition bringing her in developing their rapport. Um, as I said, she comes with a background in mental health and wellness, um, as well as school counseling. Um, so she brings the college and career readiness, um, which is what her academic background and her master's is in, um, as well as being able to do a bit of case management work, which is really working with our 20 scholars and making sure they have all of their needs met um, and everything that they need to be successful, you know, every day in school or in the program. Um, so we knew this year was, it was gonna be a pivotal year, not just them being juniors, but also getting back in person, um, which is gonna take a lot of uh, 
a lot of time and effort um, out for the team to figure out that we needed someone dedicated on the ground to be able to support our scholars yeah. like Tamira, who's here and fabulous and <laughs> gonna share Tamira, so much of her experience Tamira. and working with Christy. Welcome, welcome yeah, Tamira. So happy to have you join us, Tamira. <laughs> and we're just, I'm just gonna jump right on in with you, Tamira. You yeah, um, muted. You muted. <laughs> I'm, I was having so many technical issues. Like I was trying to log in before and then like it was just frozen. And I think my Wi-Fi went out. I don't know. It was a mess. Uh, but I'm really sorry. Now. But I'm here now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Now. Yes. And so we're so happy to have you, Tamira, one of our current juniors in our cohort. And so uh, first question for you, we're on this topic of health and wellness. Um, We were talking a bit about Christy joining the program and her emphasis and her expertise in health and wellness. We wanted to hear a little bit directly from you as one of our scholars in terms of what aspects of Dorson have helped you on your wellness journey? I feel just having a team of very supportive people has definitely helped me because I feel as though I have grown a lot from freshman year to now and it's due to the variety of personalities that I've had and like how they've worked with me and like how they understand where I'm coming from but also they get to offer their own input and like see where I can improve and where I can be like like I can make myself better like Nate is always saying that he wants us to be the best person like he wants to help us be the best versions of ourselves and I feel like having someone like him and like having this house who's like always like emphasizing these points of self-care and like doing things that can help better yourself and having these different sort of personalities all these people that come from different backgrounds Mm -hmm. that all want the same thing from us and that can all they all have different resources for us to get the same thing I think that's definitely helped a lot Oh, fantastic. And any of those things that you've learned from, whether it's been from Nate or Natasha or any of the advisors or volunteers, have you taken any of those learnings and shared them with your peers in high school? I feel like I have, like just throughout the time, even Mm -hmm. if not immediately, like after I learned it, definitely over time. Like I was just thinking about it and it's so random because like I'm surprised that I actually remembered it. But I was trying to explain to one of my friends how I felt about the work that we have. And I remembered one of the lessons that we had way back in freshman year. And it was like three M's of success or something. And it was like movement, mindset, and motivation. And that was one of Nate's lessons. So it's like, I felt that I had part of that. Like you need all three M's to be successful. Mm -hmm. And having only one or two, it's like, that's not going to get you anywhere. And that's like not good enough. So I took that sort of lesson and then I kind of like, you know, explained it like, like nice in-depth analysis. Like, oh, you can't have the mindset without having the motivation to do it. You can want to do great, but if you don't like have a real reason for why you want to do that, then you're probably not going to get anywhere. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. taking like those like mini lessons and like kind of explaining it and applying it to their lives. I've definitely done that over the course of the amount of time that I've been here. Well, what a friend you are being able to take the lessons you learn and sharing it with your peers. Shout out to you, Tamara. Thank you. Speaking of motivation, how do you stay motivated in life? And do you have any goals that you're working to accomplish this year? I find that, you know, because of the pandemic, it definitely has been harder to like, uh, in terms of schoolwork or just even personal goals, it has been pretty hard to stay motivated. But I feel like thinking about the fact that there there's always going to be a better day tomorrow and even if it's not tomorrow then maybe the day after maybe next week next month next year whatever it may be like tomorrow is not the end and if you like if it things don't feel like they're getting better then it's not the end because in the end it's supposed to work out for you and I feel like just keeping that in mind and like going through like even when I have bad days you know it's like, okay, this is not the best day I've ever had, but like, this is not the last day I'm ever going to have, you know what I mean? So I feel that if I'm not accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish, or if I'm not where I'm like happiest, then like, I have to keep pushing until I get there. Cause I'm not going to stop until I get like where I want and I get what I want in life. So I guess just keeping that mindset, like I know what I want to do. Like, um, I talk about writing stuff all the time. So until I publish my books and until I'm like a world-renowned author, you know, I'm not going to stop until I get, thank you, thank you. 
like I'm not going to stop until I get there. And like, if I had the support of people around me, then that helps me. Cause like, if other people believe in me, that means I believe in me too. So I guess that just kind of helps me. So beautifully and wonderfully said Tamira. And this is why we love having you join us for these types of panels. And so with our last few minutes, I do want to take the time to do one question for all four of us to answer. And that is, what is our vision for Dorson in the future? So if we're looking at Dorson 10 years from now, what is our vision for where we see Dorson going? I and I'll it. start if oh. you guys want. I'll yeah, start. great. So where, where I see Dorson in 10 years, I see Dorson in 10 years having its own physical space that can accommodate multiple cohorts of students at a time, that there is a full staff and that there's a Dorson endowment that there is a um, significant set of funds that are dedicated explicitly for the cultivation and the nurturing of our Dorson scholars. So in the next 10 years, I do see Dorson having a sizable endowment fund. All this, all that Nima. Natasha, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> um, Wow, I, so my vision for Dorson is to serve more students like Tamira. I mean, you can see the little bit that we've gotten to know Tamira. She is um, just so full of energy, life, potential, ideas, confidence, um, and she is a dime a dozen. There's so many students like her within Essex County that I would love for this program to be able to, to serve. Um, so my vision is to be able to expand the reach of Dorson. Um, I think it's been awesome the past three years, us really um, playing, playing around really with the Dorson Scholars Program um, and getting to redesign and kind of think through how to build a very intentional program to support students um, through high school. And so as we continue to um, tweak and better the program, I know we're gonna get um, this program to a point where we can be able to serve hundreds of students. And so that's the long-term vision I think of Dorson is letting every student in Essex County that wants uh, to be a part of a program like Dorson that they get the opportunity to and that we have a space for them. Um, so that's my, my vision, expanding the reach. Uh, I would say that my ideas are pretty similar to what's already been said. And I would imagine that I think what we were supposed to do before, like it was supposed to be us and then there were supposed to be people that came in after us and then people after them, but you know, the pandemic happened. So you didn't get to do more interviews with like everyone else. So like I had the thought, I was like, okay, like whatever happens in the future, like whatever that like oldest group of people is, like they could either do like a mentorship program or, you know, like take all of what they learn and help all the people below them. Cause that's like, you know, we talk about giving back and you talk about helping those like, like around us. So I would feel like even just within our own community, being able to be resources for other people and being able to help other people, whether it's about by connections that we have or connecting to somebody else, we can connect them to someone else. So doing things like networking and like all that stuff just within our own community and being big enough where that can work out. And we have like a variety of people and a variety of different interests and hobbies and talents and just like diversifying Dorson is pretty much what I want to see, you know? For, and I think it can happen. Like I really do. Yeah, I, I think that's an awesome idea, Tamira. I think you would make a fantastic mentor for a little little eighth grade baby, Tamira, in a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Nima, go make sure we don't wrap up before I put Tamira on the spot for her current thirty day challenge because it's amazing. But let me um, just quickly add. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to echo a lot of what the three of you had mentioned, um, but at the core of it, it's really um, hoping that we will like, kind of master this formula that we have in place, this model, this approach that we feel so confident in ourselves. Um, and as Tamira said, kind of grow our alumni, our scholar kind of cohort, the, the students we serve, and can really just kind of create community of champions for one another um, and those that are really proud of where they have come from and giving back to their community, whether it's in the area of Newark or wherever they reside in the future. Um, we really just wanna kind of instill that in them. And so getting bringing it back to Neem Aka where you started, uh, definitely just 
really excited about building the, the foundation element of things and, and expanding our reach, whether physical footprint or with some type of teach the teacher model um, and just kind of expanding this, this work um, to as many scholars as possible. Indeed, and since you said it, I'm not going to let Tamara get off the hook. So now Tamara... No, she can't. She uh, can't. <laughs> Tamara, it's so great. Tell, Just, you don't have to... so, the floor is yours, Miss Rumble. The floor is yours. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just give like instead of going like day by day, I'll just give a nice brief summary. Yeah. So basically, I called it my 30 days of being like a different person challenge. So every day for December so far, I have picked like a different activity or just something different that I want to implement into my life or implement into my routine that's ultimately supposed to help me be a better person. So like I started off with like switching up my morning routine, like to actually do more in the morning rather than just kind of like lazily getting out of bed and like like actually getting up and being intentional with my mornings and intentional with my day and doing things like working more affirmations and more positivity and more things like that into my life so hopefully these things are things that stick around long term because like I don't want to just do them once it's like okay I just did them to do them like no I'm doing them to build better habits and to like be like a bet like the best version of myself so that going into 2022, like I have a positive mindset, positive attitude, positive everything. And like, I'm going to make it a good year because like these last two years just have not been it. So the only way to make 2022 yours is by like, like actually working and being proactive and not kind of just like sitting on the sidelines song references. Nate would understand. I showed him the song. He loved it. And it just really taking it, everything into your own hands. So everything that I've been doing so far has just been about working on myself and making me better so that I can be better in the future. And it's been fun so far. So I know, like, I obviously can't see you guys, but I do encourage you guys to try something new every day. You know, I, it, it can be surprising what you do enjoy, what you don't enjoy, and you get to learn a lot about yourself. So give it a shot. But that's pretty much it. Indeed. And what a wonderful note to start our wrap up on trying something new and encouraging everyone in our audience to try something new on a daily basis and surprise yourself. So I also want to make sure that if there are any questions in our audience, please feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We do have a minute or two to be able to take any questions from the audience. Has some Jeopardy music to play. <laughs> but if folks are while folks are thinking of their um, final thoughts and any uh, last questions, are there any final thoughts or remarks that either Natasha, Nate, or Tamara you would like to leave our audience with today? Sure. So I um, I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I know these virtual events and. It's uh, Wednesday evening, you can be anywhere. So I would just say, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending your time with us, giving us about 45 minutes, an hour of your time um, and celebrating our end of year. Um, so you might be wondering how else can I support Dorson? How can I get involved? Um, so I wanna share some tidbits of ways to do that. Um, for one, follow us on social media, check out our website, sign up for our monthly newsletter on our website. Um, that's the best way to get updates on students like Tamira, what they're doing, what's going on with them on the day to day. Um, so definitely stay in tune with us. Um, you can volunteer with us as well. We are always seeking um, people with expertise to come and join our team. Um, we have an amazing group of volunteers who bring all kinds of professional backgrounds and bring great help to our organization. Um, so our Get Involved page and our new volunteer slots will be up, I think later, probably tomorrow, later today, tomorrow. Um, so you can see exactly the type of volunteer areas that we're trying to fill. Um, so please check those out. Um, you can also make a donation, of course. We are a nonprofit. Um, the end of year is here, so please choose Dorson as your end of year gift. Um, you can also make a one-time donation. Um, you can join our monthly giving program and give more sustaining um, funds to Dorson over the year. 
Um, and then lastly, it's just get in contact with us in any way. Um, if you're interested in partnering, in giving a major gift, in uh, becoming a sponsor, corporate sponsor, um, definitely reach out directly to our development manager, Eloise, um, Eloise at dorsoncommunity.org, pretty easy. Um, and for any other inquiries or anything at else, definitely get in touch with us. Uh, shoot us a message um, at our info, info at dorsoncommunity.org. Um, so connect with us, join the team, support yes. our work. <laughs> and for those in the audience, if you check the chat box, Eloise has been amazing at putting in the links that um, Natasha has mentioned, as well as some other details within the chat box. So if you didn't get a chance to write it down, have no fear, Eloise is here in the chat box with those details. Um, and we do actually have two questions from the audience. So before we get to Nate and to Myra's uh, final thoughts, um, I do want us to be able to get to those questions. So the first question is, as parents, what can we do to help support the children and the program better? And I'll leave that for either Natasha or Nate to answer. Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> um, I mean, I think first and foremost, uh, we've noticed that a lot of the effort that goes into just getting to class is one of the biggest hurdles, right? Like having having as much encouragement and support to ha help your um, son or daughter sh just show up and, and be present in, at whether it's at class or some type of cohort bonding event or a community service, um, you know, that really goes a long way, um, just, just showing up. Um, and then beyond that, um, yeah, definitely just kind of encouraging the, the scholars to continue taking time for themselves. I think Christy's done a really great job on, on joining the team to kind of reemphasize self-care and especially coming off of the pandemic, you know, um, encouraging as, as safe as you feel it is, of course, that's up to you. Um, getting back out and kind of interacting more face-to-face, -face, I think is, is a really great energy boost, getting those connections back into our lives outside of screen time. Um, I mean, those are the two that come to mind immediately for me. What do you think, Tasha? I think those are spot on, honestly. <laughs> I think self-care, that's a huge emphasis. So as parents, just supporting your students and making sure that they're taking care of themselves. I know we often focus so much on academics, asking them how was school today? How did this test go, that test go? Um, we're trying to make a more concerted effort even at Dorson to really be just checking in on them. How are you feeling? Um, how was your day today? How are you doing personally? Um, so I think any um, working with us in tandem to do that, I think will be really important and the best way that parents could support us and support the program. Yeah, and real quick, the last thing, um, just. Be transparent with us. We're here to help in the same way we're on the same team. So if we can be communicating to just get some more context about how to best support your son or daughter, that is everything. So um, that's the last thing I'd add. Awesome. And my last question, when are you thinking about another cohort? <laughs> we are always thinking of another cohort and trying to <laughs> figure out the best time to bring one in. Um, but yeah, that is the goal. As we said, our vision is to grow beyond um, just the one cohort. It's been amazing how high touch we've been able to be with this one cohort um, and getting all of our love and support. Obviously, COVID threw us for a loop <laughs> and then um, transitioning back into in-person has been like, it's almost like we've had three different years of the program. And so mm -hmm. we're kind of uh, testing and, and shifting and pivoting each time and trying to nail our, our program down. Um, but that is the goal of bringing in another cohort. I can't put a, a timestamp on it, but soon. That's kind of what we're all working on behind the scenes of trying to scale the program um, as, as, I want to say as quickly as possible, but at the best time as possible for the team and for our current scholars to make sure that their experience doesn't, um, you know, alter too much as well. Indeed. And with that, I would like to open for Nate and Tamara. We'll, we'll start with Nate and then Tamara to give us any final thoughts. Okay. Uh, I'll keep mine very short, just to echo what Natasha said. Just thank you all so much for tuning in and for all of your support um, in all the ways that you are there for us at Dorson. Um, and uh, yeah, just a message to the scholars too. Uh, just keep up all the great work. Uh, I hope that Tamira represented you all well. I know that she did, um, but uh, yeah, just really excited about what's to come with this program. 
Tamara, any last, any final thoughts for our audience? Um, I'd also kind of just like to say uh, thank you for supporting us to kind of allow the program to stay afloat and give me a place to be on Tuesdays and Saturdays if I have nothing else to do with my life. But I'm also learning like valuable life skills. So I, I'm like happy that I'm here and I'm happy that you're allowing me to continue to be here. So just continued support, continued everything. Like I really do appreciate it. Like I probably can't express it enough, but I like, I really do thank you all. So thank you for being here. Just Even just being here, this, this means a lot to us. So thank you. Well, we love you all. And with that, I will let Natasha close us out. Um, just thank you to Nimaako, Tamara. So you definitely represented yourself well and the scholars tremendously. So thank you for uh, fighting through the technical difficulties to get here. Um, thank you, Nate, for joining on the panel as well. Eloise, as always, behind the scenes. Yes. Um, and just to everyone who came out tonight, um, I really appreciate you uh, spending your time with us. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their night and has a happy holidays.